Hello and welcome. If this is your first time here, my name is Shadeva Roberts. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with what's happening here on this channel. And if you already subscribed, thank you so much for tuning in again today. Today I want to talk to you about how to grow your relationship with God. You know, as believers, you know, we can know God, you know, in word, we can know God in deed, but not actually have a strong relationship with him. And I believe that is um, God's heart, his desire, more than anything, is to relate to us, to have a relationship with us, for us to know him, to understand him, his ways, and for us to be able to commune with him in just an extremely effective manner that will solidify us in ways that we probably, you know, couldn't even begin to understand. Um, th this is the most, the primary relationship that we should focus on in, in, in um, this Christian journey, on this Christian walk, um, is to have a, an in-depth relationship with our maker. And so uh, today I just want to share some tips with you. Um, this is not all inclusive, but I believe these things will help you as you're on your journey to try to grow or cultivate your relationship with God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I bless you and just give you praise today. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your kindness, Lord God. Thank you for your goodness and just watching over us and keeping us in all of our ways. Father, I decrease and invite you into this space, Lord, into this time, Lord God. I want you to speak, Lord, what it is that you want us to hear today, Lord God. So I move out of the way, Father. Have your way and speak what you want to be heard. Breathe on this word in Jesus' name. I pray we pray. Amen. Amen. So as I said, we are, are working on, are trying to begin to cultivate a deeper relationship with God. You may be in a position where you feel like, yeah, I have time with God. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with, you know, him through the scriptures, those types of things. But I don't really feel a strong connection to him. And so in any relationship, to begin to gain um, a deeper relationship, we got to learn some things, right? So uh, let's get into it. The first thing, number one, is we want to spend time with him. You know, this would seem like the most obvious way to grow our relationship with God, being that, you know, it's one of the most vital components of growing any relationship. You got to spend time together. You have to spend time with people if you want that relationship to grow. You can't be, you know, eons away from each other all the time, you know, um, either emotionally, you know, from a connectivity standpoint or in proximity. You know, it's hard to really cultivate relationship when you haven't been connected to a person in a particular way. And we have to view that um, in that same sense, you know, as it pertains to God. And so, uh, you know, as we uh, have conversations with him, just as much as we would in any other relationship, talking to God, sitting before him in his presence, pouring out our hearts to him, letting him know where we stand, talking to him about our current situations, speaking to him about how he's going to help us get through, and most importantly, reminding him of his goodness and his faithfulness to us. What is that going to do? It's going to draw our hearts to him as we learn to uh, uh, abide in him in that particular way. And over time, we begin to sense his voice. We begin to learn how he speaks to us and how he's dealing with us. And that just draws us in to him all the more. Here's some scriptures for you to stand on. James chapter 4 and 8, New International Version says, Come near to God and he will come near to you. And it goes on to say, wash your hands, you sinners and all. But we want to focus on come near to God and he will come near to you. So as you take the time out, as you set time aside to go and sit before him, to go in and, and, and try to connect with him in a deeper way, the scripture lets you know here that he's going to draw near to you as you're drawing towards him. Matthew chapter 6, 33, New International Version says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And so how are we going to get to him? We got to seek him first. How are we going to grow, you know, in our relationship with him? We're not going to be able to put him last or, you know, if we get around to it. We got to seek him first. Seek him first. John chapter 15, verse 4, New International Version says, Remain in me. Also, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. 
Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. If you want to have a fruitful and prosperous life, what is it saying here? You've got to remain in him as he is also in you. The spirit of God, if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, is living on the inside of you. He wants you to abide there. you got to get there and park it. That has to become your safe place, your safe zone. And the more you go to him, as you draw to him, you spend time with him, you're going to have a deeper connection with him. And that's going to begin to help your relationship with him. The second step or the second tip is have a devotional time each day. Each day. You know, life is not perfect we're going to have days where we may, I don't know, be sick or, you know, you just may not be able to do it. You know, there are things that are going to come. But if your focus each day is to have a devotional time, if you make it a point on your schedule to set, some, set aside devotional time with the Lord, it is going to greatly impact your relationship with him for the better. This is the next and most important step. We got to form a relationship with the word of God while we strive to form a relationship with God. He left uh, uh, his written word, the, the, the words that were breathed from his mouth for us to learn about him. He left us instructions, you know, those types of things. He left the, the Bible here for us to be able to see how he moves and how people were able to uh, um, um, uh, uh, interact with him through our Bible stories and those types of things. We get to see his character and the different things that he would do in certain situations. And when you begin to know more about him, it's going to draw you even in deeper or closer uh, to him, right? So you have to view it uh, um, in this way, you know, say for instance, if you're in a marital relationship or you want to know more um, about your spouse, you know, if you're in a marital relationship, you're going to go seek out uh, um, uh, different resources that will help you to greater understand your spouse. You want to greater understand your significant other. So as you're reading, you know, you're going to begin to gain words of wisdom. You're going to be enlightened. And what is that going to do? It's going to stir your heart up towards that individual. Okay, now I understand you. I get you. You know, I'm learning some things about you. And what does that do? It's going to drive you towards them. It's going to encourage you to want to be around them more. It's going to encourage you to want to even learn more about them. But the main thing is your relationship is going to be better because you, you learn a new way to relate to that person. And that's what the word of God does for us. It puts us in position to be able to learn of God more and to be able to connect um, with him in that way. So you begin to get you know, a deeper understanding of him as you read through the word of God. So what does devotional time look like? You know, there has to be um, a particular scripture, right? A scripture that you may focus on um, that's surrounded by some, you know, informational material about that scripture, right? What does that do? It helps you to take the word in. So now you're getting the word in daily. And it's not to say you just want to stop at having one scripture, but if that's what's working for you, let that work for you. But you have that particular scripture and then the words centered around that scripture, will um, help you to see how to be able to apply these things in your regular old just daily life so um like i said we know what the effects or the benefits of you know are of having a devotional time but this is what the devotional time actually is so what do you need to do you need to maybe go onto your bible app you know most people have a cell phone where you can download a bible app you can go in there and there's tons of devotionals you know, that may be centered around something that you're dealing with personally or, you know, um, just something, you know, that, that may interest you. And you can begin to sign up for those particular devotionals, right? Then there's also devotional books that you can purchase from the bookstore online. And as you have those devotional books, they're probably going to give you about uh, a 30-minute study or a 30-minute reading, you know, where you have your scripture, you have some words that will teach you or some scenarios that will help you to be able to apply that particular scripture to your daily life. You learn God's ways through seeing different people talk about the scenarios that they've gone through or hypothetical scenarios. You can insert yourself there, and then it helps you to begin to understand God more. And what does that do? It's going to draw us closer to him, and it's going to help us to deepen our relationship and our connection uh, to him. So here's some scriptures to stand on as it pertains to having a devotional time each day. Um, Psalm uh, chapter one, verse one through two, New International Version says, in, in New International Version says, blessed is the one who does not walk in 
step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. So the word has to be a big part of our daily lives. It has to be a big part of our relationship with God. You can't know about God more than through reading his word, right? That's why he left it for us. He needed for us to be able to understand him more. You know, when we're trying to search out anything in this life, usually we're going to be pointed to a resource. There's going to be some book or something that we need to read. Even when we're trying to understand the meaning of a word, we go to where? A dictionary. And so the same is true with God. Many of us have a difficult time relating to God more or drawing near to him or feeling his connection. Not that he's having any trouble with that, but having a connection or sensing that connection with him because we just don't understand him. And so his word helps us to understand him. So we cannot negate the fact or the importance of spending time daily in the word of God. So let's go into number three. Sit quietly before him. And what is, what is another word or another a term that we can use to replace sit quietly before him? Solitude. Solitude is where we can sit before the Lord and just be quiet. <laughs> and I know that can be very difficult for us because we love to talk. You know, we just, we got to have something to say. But practicing solitude is a great way to be able to cultivate your relationship with God. I'm going to get into why in just a second, but I want to give you a few scriptures. Psalm 4610, New International Version says, he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among, among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. So here where it says, be still, when you begin to study this word out, it's really talking about a heart posture, right? It's talking about resting, taking on a, a peace, you know, with God and trusting in him, but we can also look at that from the standpoint of just be still, your, your physical body. Get in a position where you can be still, quiet yourself. Quiet yourself, yourself before God and know that he is God so you get to a place where you get to know him better. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, New International Version says, But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to the Father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So what is it saying here? When you go into your room to pray, it's showing you a model. Go somewhere alone. It's not to say you can't walk. You know, there's a scripture that says pray without ceasing, right? So we pray all the time. You don't have to necessarily be behind a closed door. You don't have to be confined to a particular space to pray. That's not what the scripture is saying. But when, you, when you're looking for intimacy, you want to be alone, right? In the same way. Um, as we're talking about relationships, as I said, in other relationships, when you really want to connect deeply with someone, you spend time alone with them. You say, hey, let's go out to lunch. You know, let's go out to dinner or let's just, you know, have a picnic or let's come by the house, something like that, where you can really just see them one on one and get to know them better and connect with, with, with that person. And so this is what it's saying. You know, when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. He's not, you can't see him with your natural eyes, but he will speak to you and begin to just touch your heart in such a way that you feel like you've seen. So this is a wonderful, wonderful scripture to stand on. You got to spend time alone with him. Isaiah chapter 41, verse one, New Living Translation. It says, listen in silence before me, you, you lands beyond the seas. And it goes on to say, bring your strongest arguments, come now and speak. But we're going to focus on listen in silence before me. You lands beyond the sea. Listen before me in silence. We've got to learn how to really calm ourselves, be still, close our mouths, open up our ears and open up our hearts and allow for God to begin to speak to us Um when you sit uh, before the Lord in this way, in solitude, um, you begin to uh, just begin to think. If you allow for your mind to just be free, you say, God, come in. Holy Spirit, come in and help me. The Lord will begin to impress on your heart. He'll begin to show you all the ways he's been there for you. You have a time of reflection. 
He'll show you all the ways he's been there for you, all the things that he's done for you, how he's made ways for you all, all throughout your life. And it begins to stir your heart towards worship. And if you just sit there and ponder, you will see God, God's fingerprint. You will see his handiwork all throughout your life and how he's blessed you in such a mighty way. You begin to even reflect on how God was there, there during the hard times. When you went through difficult seasons, how he made a way, how he sent this person, that resource, this thing, in order for you to be able to get through that season a little bit better. So solitude just brings us to a place where we can really reflect on, on really just reflect on God's goodness. We can really see him for who he is. We can see him more clearly with our spiritual eyes as we close our mouths. And so that's one of the great things about spending time in solitude. And then, you know, that that in turn draws our heart towards the Lord as well, you know, and it also gives us an opportunity, as I said, to begin to hear his voice. A lot of people struggle with hearing God's voice. They don't know, you know, oh, if this is God speaking to me, to me or if it's, you know, me speaking, if this is the devil speaking or, or what have you. But as you practice solitude, you begin to practice hearing God's voice because he's going to speak to you there. You invite his presence in and it's not going to be a loud, audible voice, but God will begin to whisper to you. As the scriptures say, you know, you'll begin to, to hear that still small voice, you know, the impressions that God will begin to place on your heart. And as you practice that, as you cultivate that over time, you'll be able to decipher, OK, no, that was me, <laughs> you know, and then if it's like a fear based thought or some doom and gloom type of thought, you'll know, okay, that's the enemy. But over time, you get you get used to, you get accustomed to, ah, that's God. You, you, you get accustomed to hearing him speak to you. And as I said, many times it may come through an impression that you feel in your heart. You begin to hear the whisper, the still small voice, the thing that calms you. He begin to speak sweet nothings to you to reassure you and let you know that you're his, that he loves you, that he's rooting for you, that he's there for you, that he's going to be there for you. He'll show you how to get through the next steps and get through the next season and what you need to focus more on as you cultivate that place of solitude. The interesting thing about solitude, though, is it can be one of the most uh, uh, difficult disciplines to uh, <laughs> practice because our minds can just be all over the place. So we come into solitude. I think we're about to go into solitude and you are thinking about everything that's going on. You consider what's getting ready to happen in a day. You consider what's going to happen next week and next month. Next year you start worrying because you're, you're not used to being quiet. You're used to just talking and you can also feel more compelled to try to say something in that moment and God won't be angry at you if you do say something but it's just important to be in the practice and quiet yourself and say no I'm here to hear from you Lord I'm not going to speak I'm just going to be still I'm going to be quiet I'm opening up my heart God speak to me I want to hear from you so yes it just it just takes practice it takes practice you, you say God I'm here I want to hear from you I'm trying, I want to commune with you in a deeper way and God will honor that and he will meet you in that place. But it takes practice. It's not, you know, I sit down the first day and bam, I got it. You know, even in the same way in other relationships, I keep going back to relationships to parallel to help us to see how this works. When you're trying to hear someone's heart, right? It's better for you to close your mouth and let them speak to you and pour out what's going on. And that's how you're able to connect with them right? You're not just going to speak over them when they're sharing things with you. You're not going to talk over what they're saying. And you want a deeper connection with them. So you're going to be quiet. You're going to quiet yourself so that you can hear what they're saying and allow for your heart to come to, into a, a sympathetic or empathetic place of understanding with them. And it's the same is true as it pertains to solitude. Not that God needs your sympathy or your empathy, but you're going to be quiet so that you can be in a place to hear him speak. And one thing about God, when he speaks a word to you that is specific to your life and your situation, no one can ever take that away from you. He will surprise you, you know, in ways that you're just sitting there quietly listening and it was just it would just come over you and just strengthen you in such a way 
and ground you in a way that you never thought was possible. So now you go from just having God's written word to now hearing his voice. You now get to hear him speak to you. So you connected with him through the word of God, the word that he sent, and now you're hearing his words, the word from his mouth. And people can't, no one can ever take that experience away from you. And so the experiences draw us back to him. The experiences make us want to go back and do it again, you know? And so these are the ways um, that we can strengthen and begin to cultivate our relationship with God. It's not all inclusive, but these are just some things that I think will really, really begin to benefit you on your journey to just growing and cultivating your relationship with God. I pray that these simple steps, you know, will encourage you on your journey with the Lord. And I pray also that it would challenge you to reprioritize your life so that you can begin to draw closer to God. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We bless you for this word. Thank you for your goodness, Father. Thank you for your time. Thank you for meeting us, Lord God. Thank you for caring enough about us to instruct us in your ways, Lord, and to lead us into deeper revelation of you and relationship with you, Father God. We bless you. I pray for every ear, Lord God, that hears these words, that their heart, these words, that their hearts will be penetrated, Lord God, in a new and deeper way, that they will sense the urgency, Lord, for them to draw nearer to you in a deep way, Lord God, so that you can uh, uh, solidify them, Lord God, that you would undergird them, comfort and keep them in, in new ways, Lord God. So we just bless you today, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your love and grace, Lord. Pray these words, Lord God, do not fall on deaf ears, Lord God, but we will be a people who hear your heart, that you want to connect with us in a deeper way. You desire genuine relationship with your children pray that we take it seriously, Lord. So we just thank you, praise you, and just ask all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as I said, I pray, I just thank you for tuning in today, but I, I just pray that this encourage you, encourages you and strengthens you on your journey um, and just walking with the Lord. So you guys be blessed, be encouraged, you know, refresh yourselves with these scriptures on a weekly basis, and I believe they'll help you in a deep way. God bless you, be encouraged, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.